Good morning, my Facebook viewers. Crystal here. And I just wanted this morning to show you a solution that I have to the predict future sales Kaggle competition question. This is a very difficult competition question to solve because it's a time series competition question and it's not your typical run-of-the-mill time series. So it required a lot of lateral thinking. I did actually have to use the ideas of other people to get it to work, but the algorithms that I used were my own and the way that I went about doing it was my own. So even though I had to look at the code of other people because I'm still learning, um, it is my work, which is why I wanted to show it to you. So I put this on the, the I did, submitted it, and I got a 1.04605 whenever I submitted it. And basically, that was the highest score for my personal work. But I tried another one, and I got a 1.09642 and a 1.2. 8195 and the I see using sequential that was the work of somebody else and I previously did a video on that and that was just a code review but the ADA boost is my work because I wanted to um I wanted to use SK Learn. I didn't want to use Keras. I'm not really a big fan of Keras. Quite often I can't get Keras to work. So if I can use SK Learn, I would rather use SK Learn. Um, so we'll go over to my position on the leaderboard. And it says your score was 1.04605, which is not an improvement on your best score. Keep trying. Well, my best score was where I used someone else's program. So this is my best score for my personal work. And in the previous video that I did was I said it was a code review. So I never claimed it to be my work. You know, I always said it was a code review that I had to use somebody else's work. But I will say it is very, it is a very difficult, um, it's a very difficult uh, challenge. And um, that's why you have to look on other, if you're new, you have to look on other people's works. So what I'll look at is my submissions. So you can see my submissions. So I know I'm not going to win. So since I know I'm not going to win, I'm not even going to bother um, actually submitting my work because apparently you have to submit your work and you have to decide what you want to use for your final score. But because I know I'm not going to win, I'm just not going to worry about it. So we look on this, the sales A to B. So I just want to make sure I've got the right one Let me just make sure okay so i've got the right one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it public so you can go along with me while i go over the video if you want to so First thing we'll do is we'll talk about the competition description. Say this challenge serves as the final project for the how to win a data science competition Coursera course. In this competition, you will work with a challenging time series data set consisting of daily sales data kindly provided by one of the largest Russian software firms I see company. We are asking you to predict total sales for every product and store in the next month. By solving this competition, you will be able to apply and enhance your data science skills. And it was a difficult competition because you needed help. If you're new to data science, it was a difficult competition to enter. 
So the first thing I did was I loaded my modules and then um, I loaded the files that we were going to be using. Then I loaded up my data sets. Then I converted the date to date time format, but we didn't end up using that. Even though I converted it to date time format, we didn't end up using it because the test file didn't have a date on it. And since the test file didn't have a date on it, it wasn't really that usable. So we had our date block num, which was 0 to 33. So the date block num was for every month. You had your shop ID, your item ID. You had your item price. We ended up not using the item price. And the reason why is because the test file didn't have an item price. And you had an item count day. That was how many they sold of each day. So what we did was we created a the data set and what we did was we made a pivot table. So the pivot table was indexed on shop ID and item ID. Uh, item count day was your columns and date block num fill value equals zero, aggregate equals sum. Data set read set index in place equals true data set. So you can see the pivot table that we created and uh, so you had your shop ID. The date block num no longer is 0 to 33. The date block num has become the index number. You have the shop ID and the item ID. You have the item count day for 30, well, 34 months really, 0 to 33. So now what we're going to do is we're going to process the data. In the test file, you had a column that said ID. The train file didn't have a column that said ID. So what we did was I just took a variable and called it ID and made that test ID. So ID equals test ID. And uh, we dropped ID from the test file. And the reason why is because the train file doesn't have an ID. So you didn't really need the ID except for the very end in the sample submission. You have to include the ID in the sample submission. So you have to keep the ID back somewhere so you can go back and use it at the very end, which is what I did. So now what we do is we take the test set and we merge the data set into the test set. And you have to merge the data set into the test set because the um, test set has 2014 200 rows. And then you have to merge the data set into the test set to make sure you have 2014 200 rows. And the reason why is because when you do your submission, it has to have 2014 200 rows. So in this new this new data set that we merged the data set into the test set you've got your index you've got your shop id your item id you've got item count day zero going all the way up to item count day number three thirty three and you've got lots of nan values so what we did was we tested for any null values you see there's plenty of null values so we replaced all null values with a zero. Now what we did is in our data set, we dropped the shop ID and the item ID. And the only thing that you have is item count day from zero to 33. And so that's how you're going to look at. So now what we have to do is we have to create our X, Y, and X test. So we have to split the data set in two. So Y train equals data set, I lock colon negative one colon. So that means that the last column is your label or your target. And then what we have to do is we have to drop the last column of the data set. So X train equals data set I lock colon colon negative negative one that drops your last column. And I tested it. I tested it on my Google Collapse file. And then you drop the first column of your data for your X test. So X test equals data set I lock colon one colon. And that's one thing that 
I still need to learn is how to deal with all of these numeric values because I'm very good with the words, but I'm not very good with the numeric values. And I had to actually like look it up on Stack Overflow to try to find the answer to that. But this, but this is we drop the first column of the data. So now what we want to do is we want to check the shape of X train, Y train, and X test. So you notice X train and X test has 2014 200 columns and 33, no, 2014 200 rows and 33 columns, which is what you want because X test has to be the same format as X train, otherwise the model won't work. And then um, the X Y train is 2014 200. So now what we do is we define our model and I decided to use ADA Boost Regressor. And um, I looked it up. This is coming directly from the SK Learn website. And ADA Boost Regressor is a meta estimator that begins by fitting a regressor in the original data set and then it fits additional copies of the regressor on the same data set but where the weights of instances are adjusted according to the error of the current prediction. So you've got, uh, this is one thing that I did because I looked on the SKLearn website and you are actually able to define, you're actually able to define what you want the base estimator to be so uh, I decided, they said that if you don't define the base estimator, then it's going to be decision tree regressor. But I decided that I wanted it to be random forest regressor. So you can put that information in there. So in this instance, I made it random forest regressor with a max depth of five, random state zero, in estimators equals 2000 and I fit it to X train Y train and then I made a prediction on X train and then here you got your Y print um, and so that's what I decided to do was decided to use random forest regressor on that and um, so I got a accuracy of 94 percent which was good and then I predicted on the X test and the X test gives you the values for the X test. And then what I did was I created a submission file and you can see in here at the very end, I took the ID that I had created at the beginning of the program and then I used it because when you submit your work, you have to have an ID and then we had to have item count month and you can see those are my variables. And um, when I sub saved it and submitted it to um, Kaggle, I got a 1.04604, which was my own work. And um, that was it really. So it was not going to win, but it'll get you on the leaderboard. And then you'll learn a little bit about time series. So um that's it really for this presentation and let me know what you think about this presentation. If you like the presentation, please like, subscribe and share. If you like the work I want to do, I have my email address to my PayPal account in the description because uh, I don't have enough subscribers and the only way I can make any money on this channel is to make ask for donations. So thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to making the next one for you.